The following presentation is rated Web G for general audiences. Previously on Welcome to the Family. We can use one of these to get around. You looking for good meat? Men raised in a saddle. Showed us the cowboy way. Sleep tight, don't let the bed bugs bite. There is so much to learn. We went to the mansion. I got a little Cuban inside of me. They're awesome people. This wedding was to be taking place outside. Don't look down. Anyone can entertain you, but only we entertain you. With a mixture of fun, learning, and craziness, my team and I travel the world motivating and connecting with people. Are you ready? Welcome to the family. So we found ourselves in another Harley. So the, we're driving it, by it, and we see Harley Davidson and we want to get the poker chips that the guys have been collecting from all over the world. And we walk up to the door and it says closed. But LJ then bumps into him and asks him if we can get a couple chips and he says, of course. We're at Fort Thunder Harley Davidson. We're in Moore, Oklahoma. The store kind of breaks into two halves here. This side is the parts and accessories warehouse. So everything it takes to repair a motorcycle is kind of back there in that area. There's a big closet. That's what I like to refer to it as. This is oh, wow. where we stage wow. all of the items that are gonna be for sale in the general merchandise. These are mostly new motorcycles that are in the staging area. We're moved over into sort of the service part of the dealership. This is a dynamometer. A lot of people have never seen one in person. So we can actually chass chassis dyno trikes. And you actually put it in gear and rotate it, and this machine measures real output. This is kind of the, the nuts and bolts of a working service department. And then this allows us to put these tubes on the exhaust and run the bikes in place. Believe it or not, our service facility is the number one customer for our parts facility. <laughs> so they have one <laughs> Makes sense, yeah. staff person. One of the things that I really love when we go on trips is going to historical sites. We are at the Oklahoma City bombing site right now at the memorial in the memorial area and it's probably about 20 degrees. I don't know how people live like this. This is too much suffering for Floridians over here. Thermals, wool coats and all. Holy, this is crazy. This is too cold. It has to be more than 30. I got 28. 26. 26! Oh, God. Oh, with a wind chill, that's probably like 20-something. Mementos and recognition people that have people oh, that maybe had family or in the bombing of Oklahoma City and I guess people just remembering them. The Oklahoma City Memorial is actually very unique. It has two gates on either side of it, one that says 9.01 a.m. and one that says 9.03. And that's to represent that 9.02 is actually when the bombing occurred. And so in between, there's actually a huge reflecting pool and these really unique grave markers that almost look like chairs that they decorate for Christmas and things like that. Really, it's as pretty as something could be for something that represents something so tragic. I'm trying to stay warm because bird is taking forever. I can't dance to save my life, but I can do the warm dance. And the warm dance basically is just moving every single part of you because you are so cold that if you don't just move, you're going to freeze on the spot. So the Oklahoma stockyards are really well described in like tourist destination um, pamphlets, cattle auctions and all kinds of fun things happening. So we went to go check it out. And I think we went on a dead day. Okay. This is not what I expected. There wasn't a whole lot going on there. But there was some pretty cool shops and things like that. I think LJ even got his hat shaped and fitted to his head. So when when would you have to use this? Well, sometimes hats are passed down from father to son, grandfather to grandson, and it might be a little bit different in, in size. Well, that was pretty cool, actually. The guy um, shaped my hat to my head, helped me clean it. And uh, I feel like a much more efficient cowboy now. <laughs> We're in Hot Springs, Arkansas, home of the mineral baths, I believe of President William Clinton. Bill Clinton. I think this is where he's originally from. I see you over there. I see yes, you. you. Yes. Come on over and let Zoltar be sharing with you your fortune. We're gonna go inside one of those um, bathhouses now that are built to mimic the European bathhouses. 
You know what time it is, right? Time to work out. I don't want to hear any excuses. Go out there and make it happen. You're not supposed to spy on me in here. Put everything in there and lock it up. Okay. So we are in the locker room and I am taking off my boots and they're gonna wrap a towel around this. Getting ready to go get a bath. <laughs> and all that's going through my head right now is Alex's story from Turkey. I am sitting in a sheet waiting to get Are you going to a toga party? No. <laughs> no, we're not going to a toga party. We are in a bathhouse in Hot Springs, Arkansas. And we're gonna go soak and hopefully get healed. I'm bruised up. I slipped on ice this morning. <laughs> Ouch. Maybe I can get rid of this. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, that's me. And then we went to these tubs that were probably made in 1905, they're original, which we had seen in the tour, and we said, ew, we're not going in there. But we got to go in them. <laughs> Big enough for me. It was awesome. They made you drink that, that, that. They gave you water, that warm water. Then they put me in this little tub on the ground. The whole thing was unusual. And I'm like, what's this for? He says, for hemorrhoids. And you're back. <laughs> Yeah, I had like a shifter here. You shifted hot water. You controlled the water yourself. Oh, I didn't get oh, to didn't shift get to that. Shift. Yeah. And then you let go of the water and you refill it again. Then after that, she says, what body part hurts? And in those beds, they wrap us with warm towels, which was kind of delicious. I forgot how long we were there. It felt great. And then you go into one of those things where your head is just sticking out and it's all metal. And that was kind of cool. And then afterwards, you go into a needle bath with that shower, like that really funky looking shower. Wow. There was not one spot of me without getting water. I did not like that. I, I, I was just spinning it. around in it really quickly because yeah. it's cold. Oh no, mine was hot. <gasps> Yours was hot? Yeah, was Ours delicious. was cold. It was delicious. It was like going back in time because we saw what they do and then we got to experience it. It was pretty cool. An interesting tour, interesting experience. We are here in front of the governor's mansion in Little Rock, Arkansas as you can see there. And uh, it's a really, really nice houses. It's kind of cold, it's probably in the 30s. I've always wanted to go to Graceland because there were two people that I used to look up to when I was a kid. Number one was Bruce Lee, and number two was Elvis. And I loved his music, I loved his style, and believe it or not, I really loved his movies too. The way he set up the mansion, it had a home feel to it. It wasn't like the mansion and it was cold and this, it felt like it was like a really type of family environment. I've seen a lot of awards and I know a lot of famous people that have awards, none like Elvis. Not only an award room, an award building. <laughs> The man had awards after awards after awards and then his uniforms or his outfits. I call them uniform because it's part of his job but those outfits were just what they would say today, off the chain. They were awesome. And then of course, the difference between men and boys is the price of their toys. <laughs> the man had toys. Back to knowing people that have planes. Well, usually the person has one plane. The man had several planes. One of the things I want to highlight is his logo, his personal logo, which was TCB. 
and TCB stands for taking care of business. And that's what he was all about. And it makes sense. When you actually create something like that and you live with those, that belief system, the chances of you failing are none. And obviously that's why he became not only the best or one of the best artists in the world, but to this day, he's still known as the king of rock and roll. Ray Lanka's house, one of my great friends and mentors. So it can be cool just to spend some time with people that you love and get some more knowledge in you. Get together with people that know a little bit more than what you know in certain aspects and then that way you'll always have something to learn and learning is a beautiful thing huh? nice and warm today and yellow and everything Ilanka is somebody that's very dear to me she's one of my mentors she's like my sister my mother one of my best friends she's just means so much to me and she used to live right here in South Florida but she moved to Nashville Tennessee so I only get to visit with her maybe once or twice a year. So I really look forward to those visits with her. One thing that's very important is that no matter where you go, you should always be establishing new friendships and relationships, whether they're for business purposes or whether they're to build your circle of friends. Of course, one of the things you should do when you're hanging out with your friends is have a good drink and a nice cigar. <laughs> I don't know, what do you want? I've got Dickel, I've got uh, like an Amaretto. You have, any, have you ever had a Do you like that? It's 20 degrees. I can't wait. It's 20 degrees? Yeah, so what we have to do is we have to fortify ourselves. We have to get some uh, antifreeze into our system. <laughs> and then what we'll do is we'll go out and we'll help Mother Nature by giving it some smoke so the plants can breathe outside. <laughs> oh, I miss you, man. Gotta go play golf. I smoke these to give me the illusion of being warm. Oh. Use your scooter. I will buy. That's why you don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. Don't do it. Okay. One of the cool things about visiting Ilanka and Court is they're always full of ideas. And the latest idea was Court's latest book, which was absolutely fabulous. So we decided to take some fabulous photos all over their fabulous house. Whoa, and it's wow. called Sell Yourself. Get it? Pasta. You think I might not be I like that. Yeah. Right off of this, we can create the video concept, put the book live before it even gets published. You can actually, yeah. One of the cool things about visiting Ilanka, the bonus, is that she is absolutely one of the best cooks I have ever encountered. And she just cooks these amazing meals you can't get enough of. Before we had television and we had phones that everybody was on, um, families used to get together and play canasta. Swear at each other and we get cheat. To swear? Yeah, and yeah. swear and cheat and, and cheat and cheat. Oh, oh. I'll be doing this. Because <laughs> yeah. most most likely so nobody's going to go out yet, yeah. yeah. so you're okay. 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 So now okay, we're Bert. back to Bert, who's totally confused. So who are the cheaters here? Who do we got? The two teammates. The two teammates. <laughs> and the Bert. Cuban oh, and the oh. Egyptian. It's being racist. <laughs> I think yeah. that should be a new book. No, I didn't cheat yet. You mean we didn't catch you yet? Wait a second, we had one group that was ejected. What? <laughs> That's right, unsportsmanlike conduct. What is this? <laughs> Five life? points above them Five points was above. this group. The people right. that tried to kill everybody. And the group that was quiet and reverent and, 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 um, and not standing up and talking loud. And not loud. standing up and yelling and talking loud and screaming. <laughs> <laughs> Ilanka is also the founder of Tesla Technologies, which has this great nanotechnology that goes inside of watches. It was also one of the technologies that Oprah favorited many years ago. With this technology, there's also this meter on a computer, the system that she developed, that actually tells you about what your aura and your fields are. And whenever she hooks you up to the machine, she can tell you specifically what your energy levels are like, whether they're good, what you gotta develop. It's really interesting. Mind is good and energy is high. In other words, you're staying up there. When you get that heart chakra back open, you're gonna 
be able to communicate. See that heart chakra is opening. Oh, what about that? Look at that. See how it's opening? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tennessee. Um, That's right. That one. Tennessee, let's see what happens. High frequency, really blue, calming. It brings you a sense of peace. Very balanced in all the chakras. Yeah. Wow. All the okay. And the, and the... What does that mean, Alonza? I've never seen that before. I haven't either. <laughs> Holy shit. LJ, Is you're that LJ? exploding. Okay. That, all that pink I means he's just a little love bug. No, he's a sexual love bug. Oh, look at that. <laughs> look, at that. Root look at that root chakra. Look at that root chakra. Doesn't this suggest that he has a great potential, but he doesn't he, he doesn't express it, doesn't use a lot? Well, that's heart chakra. No, he's a good communicator. No, no, no I'm talking about the psychic support. Yeah, he's, he's got huge psychic, psychic good. ability. Good field, major chakra balance. Amazing communicator. More stress than anybody else, though. Stress goes on you. Yeah, no. Nothing new. Energy's good, though. Stress is all mental, all in the mind. So no body stuff, which is great. Yeah, I feel, okay. I feel wonderful. Yeah. yeah, good, good, good. One of the hardest things for us to do is to say goodbye to them. I hate saying goodbye to Elanca and Court. It kills me, it rips me, it shreds me. So next out, we got Chattanooga, Tennessee. We knew that the roads there were gonna be uh, mountains and it was gonna get kind of crazy. What we weren't expecting was the fog. There was this fog that was you couldn't see 30 feet in front of you. It was bad. What is that? That's how the pileup happened with idiots what? like that. Fog aside, it was already freezing. We were going up and down this mountainside. I mean, you got ice coming out and like just it was it was it was interesting. Are we in heaven? We're in heaven. <laughs> if we don't drive right, we will be soon. <laughs> So the reason why we went through all that fog is to meet one of our good friends, Chevy Gunn. Or actually, Thomas Lewis is his real name. Are there any killer dogs here? Maybe. Hey! Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought John's going to Asheville! Surprise! Surprise! We've known him on social media for a while. We've never had the chance to meet. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Come on in. However, we always stay in touch with one of our recent communities that we've created on the Glide platform. There we get to communicate with like-minded individuals and we're always supporting each other. It's a really positive atmosphere. So when we came out here to meet Chevy for the first time, it's not really like meeting him. Ow! Y'all can bring the dog in, I put mine up. Hello? Oh, hi. I was fixing to FaceTime you. <laughs> What's up? Look who I got! Look who I got! <laughs> At my house! I know you, dog! <laughs> so we are at Chevy's house. Chevy had to go to work. But uh, we're working ourselves over here. We got the girls over there checking out something in the truck. Uh, cleaning out some stuff in there. Um, I'm up here, I'm um, fixing up the um, AC that we got here, uh, just needs a little bit of um, fixing up before we get to hot weather, we're going to need it soon, and uh, yeah, so this is Chevy's place, it's pretty cold out here, but we're kind of getting used to it, but not so used to it that we don't wear layers. on our way down from Tennessee, we passed through Atlanta, and I can't stop in Atlanta without saying hi to my cousin. What did it? We just got a flat tire again. Yeah. <sighs> so what do you got to do, call AAA? No, no, this is not bad. You should see the one in Texas. And that you was just bad. bought it? You just bought it. Brand new? Brand freaking easy. The night that we arrived in Atlanta, not only did we get a flat tire, <laughs> but we also got to experience my cousin. She moderates a Narcotics Anonymous session, um, and she is always about giving back to the community. They actually created a festival for the fire ends. 
And that's the king of fire ants right there. Every festival. town has a festival of something, and they're all known for something. They're known for the Fire Ant Festival. This is um, a brochure from last year, which was gone with the Fire Ant. Oh, no. <laughs> um, you know, most people try to shoo them away. We embrace them, so... <laughs> The Crime and Punishment Museum was a unique experience. Oh my god. Simply, it was a small town and they created a museum out of an old jail. And I must admit, it was kind of freaky. <laughs> but yeah, they did whip prisoners in the early days. Wow. They really did. People complained about them being whipped on uh -huh. public roads. And they had to stop no, people to start doing it. <laughs> Not in public. <laughs> You wonder what in the world is that? Well, apparently, when somebody was electrocuted, they had a tendency to stick to the chair. Oh! <laughs> My oldest son, who was now 63, was in his 20s, and he married the daughter of the chief clansman here oh, in Turks County. We didn't know it until after he was married. So I know some stories about clan. <laughs> yeah, there's a historical there's a story. society. Mm -hmm. I thought so. When somebody was executed up there, they were hung. They would come through the trap door. They used to hang the prisoners and they'd fall into the sheriff's office and then like wheel them right out to the the morgue that was right next door. It was, it was different. There are records of who arrested, who was arrested, and what oh, for, wow. and what happened to them. All of these, they're fascinating. Look at that handwriting, how beautiful. Here we've been at women's, this is the women's facility. They didn't have a lot of women, women They would die. And so they would be thrown in a box similar to this, taken out to a cemetery, put in a special place that was for vagrants, put in there, dumped out, and the box would be brought back oh, to be wow. reused. You know, this is the back end. You can see how rugged the, the construction is. I mean, everything is so solid here. Wow. Um, now I'm going to take you to everybody's favorite spot. Your penguins stuck. Come to the window and you could say your piece, you know, to, to the crowd. How heavy these are. I mean, wow. three loads right there. You're, you're not getting out of this. No, it's yeah, not. You're sleeping watching where your death is. <laughs> and oh. of course, that's where um, yeah. the hangings would have uh, took place there. Mm. About 20, 15 years ago, there was a man named Jeep Shearers who mm -hmm. lived in Rebecca. He was shot and killed in the middle of the night and his cabin burned down around him. Wow. Nobody ever found out who did it. Thank you so much. It's an unsolved crime. About six years ago, the brother of one of my closest friends was shot and killed in the middle of the night and his cabin burned down around him. It's never been solved and the GBI kept it on, as an open case for three years. About four years ago, it might have been a little longer, our local tax assessor and his wife and pregnant daughter were shot and killed in the middle of the night and their house burned down around them. They've never solved that crime, although they do say that there is a possible person of interest. Hmm. So we have our three unsolved mysteries in turn Probably more, but that's all I can think of right now. <laughs> and these I'm familiar with. Wow. So, but other than that, it's a nice little town to live in. Yeah. Overall, the trip was awesome. There were times when we got on each other's nerves. There were times when we got frustrated and, you know, just tired of being stuck in a tiny space for so many hours. But it was a cool experience with some of the most important people in my life. And we got to go and explore some really neat places that I'd never been before. And it's memories that I will have forever. I'm Bert Oliva from Bold Worlds. Welcome to the Family Show. And what I what? Yeah, it's kind of difficult when you talk to yourself. So what I want you to do is I want you to comment, subscribe, forward, repost, do whatever it is that you're gonna do to make sure no one misses this show. 
but do it now. Do, do, what are you waiting for? Do it now. Now.